its animation. Its animation is much And I said, hey, can anybody tell me what song they're using? And it turns out they're using Crazy Talk. Now, when I did the video, the very first thing I said, Crazy Talk. You remember Innocent on the SACOM channel? And Mistress. They were used, uh, done using Crazy Talk. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I have, hold on, let me show you. So that we don't misunderstand what I was asking. I have Crazy Talk. It's made by a company called Relusion. I just, when I reset the computer, it's no longer on here, so I have to install it again, and I'll be doing that in a moment. So, I want to thank those of you who have provided me that information. The only reason why I don't want to use Crazy Talk, pay attention, is because Crazy Talk has a rendering phase that uses a lot of systems resources, and I usually don't have that type of time to uh, spend doing a video. That's why you don't see all the, what do you call it, um, all the production going into doing the videos with me. You don't see me sitting up there pointing the things and putting links in and all, no, because I want to get the information out to you because the information is more important than the presentation. Okay, I understand about presentation. But I don't think presentation is the number one thing. So what I'm going to be doing while I'm talking to you is I'm going to be installing Crazy Talk. Okay? Crazy Talk 8 is what I have. Now, as you see, I have the full package. Now, this is a several gigabyte. Okay? Several gigabyte. When I say gig, I mean gigabyte. Let's see, there's a README text. This README text tells me exactly what I need to do. So that means that I won't be able to do it during this video because it's going to take too much of my concentration, making sure I do everything correctly. But I will be doing everything correctly. That's the first thing. Second, I have an individual who's incarcerated. Now, he's incarcerated for murder. Now, he did admit or not admit. <laughs> The only problem is the way the statute is written. He was charged under a particular statute. There is a rule when putting together a statute. When Congress puts together a statute, Congress can't just put together any statute. They cannot have a statute that is so vague that the men of common intelligence must guess at its meaning. Okay? They, they cannot have an... This, the language, the conclusion is inescapable that the language of the part of the statute he was charged with is so vague that they couldn't charge him with that. However, he remains in jail. Why? Because his was without the possibility of parole when it should have been with the possibility of parole. People say, well, he made, he was charged with this, and he was charged with... Let, let, me, let me make sure you guys understand something. I, as the person who helps people with cases, I can't care if a person is guilty or not. That, that is the number one rule. I cannot impose my opinion. I hate guns, but yet and still, I have had to help people who were charged with committing crimes with guns. Okay, because I have to be impartial. Now, trust me, there are a lot of things that I don't like. I don't like people who violate my God's laws. I really can't stand it, because that means that they're disrespecting my God. But I cannot bring my own personal opinion into anything where I'm helping someone legally. Okay, if I'm helping you with a legal matter, I cannot judge you. I don't have that right. You feel me? Oh, I already have it. <laughs> the very same section I just copied, I already have. Okay, so, because I, you see it's just right up above. All right, now I'm not just putting together that for him. He needs this information specifically because the law requires that he is resentenced. 
Okay, and if they resentence him, it has to be 25 years to life. He's been in for 28 years. And while in jail, or, yeah, 28 years, he has a daughter who, no, 22 years, I'm sorry, there was someone else who's been in for 28 years, uh, the guy who was a bunkie of mine, he's been in there for 28 years, and he is the same age as myself, he's one month younger than I am, and being in there 28 years, I kept giving him information, trying to help him find out how to get himself out, and he was, I couldn't understand what his frustration and his anger was about, because he had a lot of anger and a lot of frustration, a lot of pride and a lot of, I hate this and do that, and I couldn't understand until the one who's been in for 22 years, now 23 years, his daughter was 23 years old, she just died at the beginning of this year. So if you can imagine speaking to someone almost every day on the telephone, and then not being able to speak to that person because that person is dead and you're not able to go to a funeral or not able to say anything or, you know, console the mother or anything. That's what he's experiencing. So I'm mentioning all of this to you, including the gentleman who was there for 28 years, who was my bunkie. And whenever I'm in a situation like that and somebody's my bunkie, then they get my protection. They don't have to even worry about it. Anybody come their way, they have to go through me. That's always been the rule. And I promise you, in that environment, nobody wants to go through me. I'm sorry, it's a different personality in such an environment. I avoid violence at all costs. But if it's a necessary, well, they weren't calling me crazy for nothing. I black out. I don't remember things. Okay not bragging that's why i've stayed away from violence because what if i do hurt somebody i'll never forgive myself and my god would not forgive me because i know about it in advance so i stay away now i'm not mentioning that to make myself appear to be better than anybody else what i say that makes me worse than everybody else because everybody else is able to control themselves when they get angry i have been able to control myself to keep from getting angry but i love bruce banner I ain't talking about that Bruce Banner. I'm talking about Bruce Banner and, and, and Bill Bixby Bruce Banner. Okay? I'm talking about that Bruce Banner. You don't want to make me angry. I love that because I used to tell that to people. A lot of them didn't believe me. They thought I was weird sitting up here quoting the Incredible Hulk. Until certain situations happened. And then all of a sudden, no, nah, man, leave that fool alone. Uh-uh, no, nah, man, it ain't worth it, was what they would say. In this situation, the gentleman who had been in for 28 years, it turns out that he could not read very well. He was illiterate. I promise you, I couldn't tell. There is no way in the world I would know that he was incapable of reading. Because every time I gave him something, he accepted it and put it to the side. And then I kind of noticed that I never saw him reading, or at times I saw him just reading. It appears he was staring at the pages so that everybody could think that he could read. I didn't find this out until after I had been long away from that place. And when I did find it out, I was greatly disturbed. And I'm glad I didn't know it when I was in there because I would have been offering to assist him which would have been not the right thing to do because a lot of people take that personally and he would have been offended and I know because that's what I mean that's what I was having to deal with is his personality he would have been offended got some things I want to show you guys ladies and gentlemen so the first thing is what I did want to let you guys know is the software that they are using is what this gentleman is talking about right here He's talking about the green screen. Now the green screen, nope, not there either. Not not there, not there neither. It's right about here, should be. Anyway, there's a green screen that allows people to put up an image in the background and then they put up the character. But if you notice, most of the crazy talk character, that's the green screen, right? The green, green, green screen, that's the green screen. 
most of the characters in Crazy Talk, you only see their upper torso. You don't see the full body. Now, this is the cartoonish looking face that I was talking about. So I can create the face. I just, because it was the entire body, even though you didn't see the body move, that's what I was interested in. So I do believe that they do have the ability of putting the head on a body. Oh, he put his head on a body. Oh, he's no longer a bodiless person. Okay, so this was, I have Crazy Talk, like I said, I've used Crazy Talk. That's where you get the innocent from SATCOM. So thank you. Those of you, there have been quite a few of you who have commented on that, and I appreciate it. I want you to know that, and I definitely tried to respond to every single one of you, letting you know that I appreciate it. See, them are my peoples. Okay, so thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the document that I'm showing you now is the mortgage document. It is complete for now. Um, there might be some spell corrections, but nothing major. You follow me? The document does what it's supposed to do. Now, if you go to any complaint form, they want to know a couple of things. They want to know who you are, so your name. They want to know how to get in touch with you, so your address. They want to know what are the references for the information you're talking about. So you put the account number and the addresses for the property here. They want to know what the issue is. So we're talking about mortgages. We're not talking about uh, buying a product and the product not working. I've already checked each one of these items. You can check, you can click, you can type. Okay? And you see the type is small. The reason why the type is small because we want to give you as much space as possible so that you don't have to use extra material. Even if you're only putting two lines in here, when you print it up, put a line through the empty spot. Okay, just take a pen and mark a line through the empty spot. Why? So that nobody can fill anything in afterwards. So after you select what type of loan, because this is only about a loan. After you select that, then you fill out and you explain why you feel it was an unsecured loan. You don't have anything to fill here. That's information where you're providing them because they're going to require that you document how you were damaged and that you document why they should accept your complaint. So the first thing you do is you say, and as far as this presumption thing, the presumption, you think that all the weight's on me. Well, I'm not going to allow you to do that. I, this presumption thing, the fact that a presumption is not based on faith, it must be built on a solid foundation. Well, my foundation is the truth. That's what I'm putting things on. Then it says, you're telling them, please take notice that the information that I'm reporting, I don't, this information is not done for you to do an investigation on me. I'm not coming to you, and I'm only giving you 75 days. 75 days is reasonable, people. 75 days is reasonable to do a cursory investigation to see if these things are probable, not if they are true. The FBI, the CIA, and all these other law enforcement agencies don't get to determine truth. They only get to determine if there's a possibility, probability that a crime was committed. Okay? Then they must file the complaint. You file the complaint, but then they must file the complaint with the appropriate authority. They are an investigative agency. That's what they do. Well, they also are prosecuting. We're not talking about that right now, so you just, you just be quiet. I apologize. This is a criminal allegation complaint. It is not a claim for tort. As deprivations of rights while acting under color or authority of law is said to be a felony. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not doing this to be investigated. See? It says you may not use any of this information to harass, investigate, threaten, or intimidate the witnesses such as are as such is a violation of law and presumed witness tampering well you document that you're a witness to these information to this report 
to this complaint set of information. So you're telling them, hey, you are permitted to send it to appropriate agencies, but you are not permitted to send it to agencies so that you can investigate me. Because that's what they do, ladies and gentlemen. They will investigate you. No, I don't want you investigating me. That's not why I'm doing this. This is a private communication. This is not a public communication. I'm filing a private complaint. I'm not filing a public complaint. Well, you're a member of the public. You better believe it, which is why I also have, as a member of the public, the right to privacy, you ignorant mother... I'm sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, again, you don't have to fill out anything here. The document only validates what the law says. For instance, I understand the following fact. See, that's why you're stating facts. You're not stating opinions. That the Attorney General is not my private attorney, but rather represents the public by enforcing laws prohibiting fraudulent, deceptive, and unfair business practices. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? This is a fact because this comes from their website. Literally, all of these words are theirs. The only thing I did was change the I. For instance, this paragraph right here. I grant limited authorization to the Attorney General's office to send my redacted complaint and supporting documents to individuals and businesses identified in this complaint for notification purposes and not to investigate my person, friends, family, realities, property, interests, assets, as I am a witness to these events and not a subject to an any criminal investigation and or otherwise. I also understand that the Attorney General may need to refer my complaint to a more appropriate agency only as indicated herein. Any other such necessary need will have to be approved in advance prior to any such communication associated with my interests, as the right to privacy is a right to privacy. Do you follow me? I don't think any one of you can disagree with what this just said. So, again, this is not designed for me promoting my views. That's why it took so long. I had to make sure that I wasn't doing this for me, but for you. I don't have a mortgage. But if I was doing this, there are certain things that I must state because the law requires it. Are you challenging a misapplication of law or statute? Such as dealings with lenders and their servicers and making payments or getting information regarding your loan, managing your account, getting an account, accounting of all payments, interest, stocks, QCITs, and or securities, and or proofs of debt via verification of debt or disputed debt requests? In other words, have you asked for information and or records that you feel you are entitled to and were either ignored and or your requests were refused? Please explain. And that's all you have to do is briefly explain. You don't have to give all the details. It's not necessary. On this day, I asked. On this day, they said, no, we have a contract. We have an agreement between each other. They are the record keepers. They are the custodian of records. I have a right to have access to those records. That's what you're going to put. Fact. The law often speaks of presumption of innocence. The use of this term, presumption, can be misleading. Okay? Again, this is what their cases say. I didn't say this. When they come up with presumption of law, they're going off of these one or two idiots who came up with some doctrines and theories. Never mind. That is, if you believe that the alleged mortgage was improper or that the lender misrepresented the fact that to qualify, no collateral was necessary to obtain a loan other than your down payment, please explain the timeline and concise statements. I went to the bank to get a loan. The bank said, we will consider. We need this. So they asked for my employment, then they asked for my banking, and then they asked me to provide this and that. After I provided this, the bank said, hey, you are approved. At no time in telling me that I was approved for the loan that they say I needed to put down collateral. Go back. Look. But that's how you're going to explain that box, okay? 
If they never told you you had to put down collateral, and then at the end of the loan, that's called bait and switch, ladies and gentlemen. It's against the law. They know what you're talking about. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Did you know or were you told by the lender the following? It says you may have to manually check each box because this will only let you check one box at a time. See? Can't check that box and then check this box at the same time. So you'll have to manually go back and check the boxes that apply. Sorry! But that's the only way to do this section the way it's being done. It's a programming software issue. Not going to go over those questions. Now, the bank said they loaned you consideration and value. Ladies and gentlemen, we put the definition. This is a fact. This is the definition of value. And then we copy their own statements from case law. Okay? We did that because we don't want no one to sit up here and misunderstand. Um, 9, section 201, and, or is it 202 and 209? See, it's been a long time. Uh, let me show you guys real quick, because we, we did a video yesterday on it, so we're going to do NH, the easiest way for me to remember is by putting NH, 1778, House bill, you see it right there, NH House Bill 1778, that's all you got to do. That's where we're going. We want the text. Now, this bill did pass eventually. Part of it did not, but the bill passed. But, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need to go to New Hampshire to get a ID that says that you are a private citizen, that you are not a driver that you are you have the right to travel I know I know in, in the state of California I wish I I don't have the letter from the DMV handy but I wish I could show you the letter from the DMV telling me that I must comply everybody in California didn't say I must they said everybody in California must comply with the law I never said that everybody in California mustn't comply with the law they know that I don't have a driver's license they know I have not had a driver's license in the state of California since 2008. That's my, the expiration was 2012. They know for a fact that in no state do I have a driver's license. Because I will never drive commercially ever again. I don't have it in me to do that. See? Relative to registration of commercial vehicles, commercial motor vehicles, commercial motor vehicles... Well, my vehicle is not a motor vehicle because a commercial motor vehicle is a motor vehicle. My vehicle is not a motor vehicle. My vehicle is a vehicle. Well, a bike is a vehicle. Yes, a bike is a vehicle. So my vehicle is the same as a bike. Well, they regulate bikes. They require you to have licenses in certain states. That's fine. But they cannot get you for riding a bike without a license. Go ahead and see if they can charge me for riding a bike without a license. No such jurisdiction. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to the purpose section. See, this is purpose. P -p 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 purpose. This is this section right here. That's all I want. Because I'm looking for Article 9-109. See, I said 209 and 202. So we want 109 and... 102. So, 102, 109, Uniform Commercial Code. That's why there's a colon there, because this is the Uniform Commercial Code. That's why they include this here, to show where it's referenced. Ladies and gentlemen, we did a video yesterday showing about household goods and consumer goods, not for commercial use or for profit or gain. That is your property. That is your property. But, however... Pay attention to what it says. Where is that corporate? Corporate. The corporate state employees. The realtor is a state employee. The bank is a state employee. And they have not told you about the consequences arising from the corporate offer to contract. Which is deemed silent deception and inducement to fraud. This is not a sovereign citizen writing this, ladies and gentlemen. This is the New Hampshire legislature. Being enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives and General Court convened.
okay now let's get back to oh no we don't want that we want to get rid of you she gets on my nerves I keep seeing her and she just she's just tiring because ain't nobody that happy and gay I mean there are a lot of people who are happy well y anyway y'all know what I'm saying okay the next section again the primary issue being raised in this instance you're getting them right back on point see no one is stating that there isn't a security agreement what is being challenged is the validity of that agreement and the proposition that such an agreement rests on the security of collateral utilized to secure the loan in the first instance okay okay please detail the nature of your complaint against the individuals the businesses and or the provider include the who what when where why in your complaint ladies and gentlemen the reason why we highlight for you to include the who what when where and why in your complaint is because the law requires you now we've already documented the who up top we documented the date as to when all this occurred but we haven't documented succinctly that it occurred between this date and that date so we want it now what the document does say the conspiracy is ongoing because you have to document that it's ongoing ladies and gentlemen what I realized I was thinking this morning when I got up because I had the attorney who actually was the prosecutor she is a she's a slut now I'm not saying she's a slut because I'm I hate women I'm saying she's a slut because that's what she is in every sense of the word she is a prostitute for the system you see she did everything she did knowing that she had no right to do it and she pursued headlong and then tried to label me as a sovereign citizen in the newspaper that paper is still up so I'm gonna hold the paper is owned by USA Today I'm gonna hold USA accountable for the lies see that's the whole unique thing about having a case overturned and they're still publishing the information online so I will get their attention see exoneration is exoneration and so they were to do a retraction they haven't done it so I'm gonna charge them for every day that they haven't done a retraction and they're gonna meet up with me and I'm gonna get their attention I'm just gonna follow a simple lawsuit I'm gonna follow it against the attorney as well see she doesn't get to do that she doesn't get to slander me because she's not doing it under her authority as a prosecutor she spoke to a public newspaper that wasn't as a prosecutor there is no qualifications of the job as a prosecutor to speak to the newspaper the United state does have a right to the press but not to talk about somebody who is presumed innocent no 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 and then when they, the jury made their verdict she said hey I can I have freedom when she knew better in the first place so I'll, I'll take care of them in due time I'm not in a rush I ladies and gentlemen for fraud for conspiracy there is no statute of limitation for fraud or conspiracy that's why your document here mentions fraud several times well attempted fraud okay we highlight because you must know got to do this too because it's necessary that you know this now those of you who have any type of mortgage issue you're gonna need to know this information you're gonna need to read over this you're gonna need to read each word understand every single statement that is made is a fact now I didn't ask them for California and I didn't ask them for fraudulent okay let's get rid of fraudulent misrepresentation okay because I don't want fraudulent misrepresentation there's no such thing as fraudulent misrepresentation I want elements of fraud and I don't want elements of fraud up on the court nobody asked for that I just want elements of fraud in the United States common law common law common law common law generally identifies nine elements needed to establish fraud 
Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that is not true. Fraud does not take nine elements. That's fraud when you add conspiracy. Then there are nine elements of fraud. Okay? So we're going to cover those because we need to make sure that you know. Because you need to know that we have covered it in the complaint. We've covered it in the judicial misconduct complaint. Uh, not misconduct, criminal conduct complaint. Fraud cannot be easily defined because it can be accomplished in many different ways. Oh, that is so special that they said that. Okay, where are your nine elements? In the United States, the common law generally identifies fraud as a representation of the facts. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that's why that's not an element. You see, fraud requires misrepresentation of the facts so misrepresentation includes representation that's why they're nine not nine elements they, they combine two in the first one misrepresentation where's misrepresentation and I know that they are gonna be talking about misrepresentation they don't actually use the word misrepresentation here but when they say based on falsities so misrepresentation and or misinformation, deliberate misinformation, and or falsities, it's materiality, that is subject matter. And that the person who is misrepresenting the information has knowledge of the falsities, or that it is not true. Number five, the person presenting the information has a tent, uh, intent to have you rely on their falsities. That's why you have drifters and grifters and shammers that if you rely on that and you get damaged, that they know that there's a possibility that you could be damaged. You must claim that you were injured by reliance on these falsities or other people's reliance on the falsities and that you have suffered injury as a result of the falsities. So that's six and seven. Same thing though. And that as the injured parties, by relying on that information, it has caused damage to both you and your property. This one does not mention property. So you must say that you and your property were damaged. So let me explain something, ladies and gentlemen. What has happened is... I was thinking this morning of how I really got started. I, I mentioned in a video yesterday that when I was an early teen, about 11 years old, uh, roughly the fifth grade, I'm sitting there and my teacher is going over the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. I really do believe the way he covered that with us, that he was similar to what we talk about on my videos about your Bill of Rights. I had to realize that that's when I really got started when wanting to know about that. Uh, he was a person of color. His name was Mr. Bates. The Bates Motel? Yeah. Yeah, if that's what you want to say. Mr. Bates was... He was okay for a teacher. He... I Because myself and two other people, Dennis, who was Asian... And Dennis and Drake, it was myself, Dennis, and Drake, we were the three that hung around each other. We're very good friends, fifth and sixth grade, Dennis, myself, and Drake. We sat towards the back of the class, but again, I was the AB student, so I, even though it looked like I wasn't paying attention, I was paying attention. And I remember being very interested in these things known as constitutional rights because I grew up in the projects. And because I grew up in the projects, uh, my rights were said to be important. And so I highlighted my rights at every single turn. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been interested in law all of my life for as long as I can remember. I was interested in right and wrong and helping people when they are wrong helping to speak up for people. I am the one who, while in the seventh grade, 
was watching a man beat up on a, a woman. Obviously, the neighborhood I was in, she appeared to be one of those type of women, you know, of the night. But that didn't matter. I saw that man beating up on that woman and my brother and sister are sitting there at that bus stop with me and I'm getting ready to go over there. Now, here I am, about 13... Am I 13? No, 15. Nope. Nope, sorry. I'm about 13 at this point. That's the uh, 7th grade. So, I'm going over to speak to this fool because he's getting ready to hit this woman and he got a knife in his hand. And my sister begged me not to go over there and my brother pulled on me and told me not to go over there. Now, I was stronger than my brother. And I listened to them and I was mad and tears was coming out of my eyes because I wanted to hurt that man. You see, that's always been my nature, to defend those who don't have the ability to defend themselves. People say, well, look at what you did! Well, let me explain something to you. F you and trying to justify or unjustify or trying to equate something. Stayed up out of my business. I apologize to the rest of you who don't think with such ignorance. What I did was wrong. I've admitted it was wrong. And I've suffered as a result of it. So stayed up out of my business. That's the best way I can put it. Because ain't nothing else going to be said. So the individuals who want to get into my business, then you'll have to keep being told to stay up out and if you get too far into my business, then you'll have to deal with me. And those of you who are willing, by all means, bring it. Okay, what I'm trying to say, this has nothing to do with pride. This is everything to do with my business belongs to me. None of you have the right to involve yourself in my business because it belongs to me. My business is my property, not yours. So stay out of my business. If I mention something to you, take it with a grain of salt and move on. If I say something that you don't like, take it with a grain of salt and move on. You're not going to change it. If I say something on one of these videos and it's either a joke or it's a statement, you, some of you are the most ignorant people on this planet. I am not doing any of these videos under oath. Go back and take a look. Now, I have not lied, and I don't intend to lie on any of my videos, but I am not here testifying to nothing. I'm not here giving testimonials. If I tell you about an experience, that's all it is. It's an, it's an experience. Oh, man, that was a wonderful experience. <laughs> Can we do that again? Okay, that's all it is. But I don't understand. For the life of me, I don't understand people. I really don't understand people. Um, one young man told me, he's one of the persons who sent me uh, the video, and this young man, he said, and just remember there are still some good people on this, in, in this world. And ladies and gentlemen, I am grateful that he said that. Okay? I am grateful that he did that, that he said that there are still some worthwhile people on this planet. Because dealing with some of you, you have taken that phrase and have turned it over on its head. Because some of you, and I'm sorry, I'll tell the truth. That's right, because I don't lie. Some of you are not worthwhile. Some of you are worthless. And I just wish that you will change. Some of you have grown up with so much hatred and envy and judgment. You want to judge everything and everybody except for yourself. Shame on you. You want to compare everybody else to your ideals of what you think as opposed to comparing yourself to those very same ideals. You want to sit up there and because somebody doesn't agree with you you want to get angry ladies and gentlemen somebody doesn't agree with you move on 
There is no law that everybody has to agree with you. You are not the revolver of the universe. Huh? What do you mean by revolver of the universe? Well, the universe does revolve. You guys, most people don't understand. Galileo was wrong. All of the other so-called astronomers were wrong. The universe does revolve around the earth. What? The universe does revolve around the earth. That don't make no sense. How you how you gonna say the universe revolves around the earth? Well, the universe revolves, doesn't it? Yes. And there is no other life form on any other planet to our knowledge. Is that true? Well, they haven't found it yet. That's right. And since they haven't found it, when we look out from the planet Earth at the rest of the universe, we are at the center, are we not? Well, wait, wait. Uh, that, that don't make no sense. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you are in a area where there's not a lot of street lights and city lights look up at the universe and notice that you're not looking at the center you're looking from the center it's all perspective it's all perception we are not perceiving things from the outside we're perceiving things from the inside we recognize when we look up into the night sky that we are part of the universe because we recognize we are part of the universe, then we are recognizing that the earth is the center from our perspective. For if it is not the center, then point to where the center will be. You cannot. Astronomers and other scientists cannot point to a center of the universe. Go ahead, ask them. Well, we're part of the Milky Way galaxy. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what we're a part of. From our perspective, we are the center. Now, that's just one aspect. If you go to scripture, in the beginning, God created the heavens. Go back, read. Every single Bible says those First four words, well, first six words. In the beginning, God created the heavens. Sorry, first eight words. <laughs> okay, those first eight words is in every Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens. In every Bible. Okay, hold on. The heavens were created first. Pay attention. And the earth. He already made the earth the center of his creation because he emphasized it because remember the earth is part of the universe but he emphasized the earth he didn't emphasize Jupiter he didn't emphasize the Andromeda galaxy no he emphasized the earth why because for us it was to be the center now he spoke about it being the beginning Pay attention. He spoke about it being the beginning. So, of course, it's the center. So, that's what I mean by you are not the center of revolving. The earth, the universe doesn't revolve around you. So many people think that their opinion matters. They want to get their point across because it's so important to them. Ladies and gentlemen, life doesn't work that way. Your opinion doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to prove to you that your opinion doesn't matter. When was the last time you got your way? Because if your opinion mattered, you wouldn't be going through the problems. You wouldn't have debt. If your opinion mattered, you wouldn't be going through foreclosure. So stop thinking your opinion matters. Your opinion doesn't matter. To prove to you your opinion doesn't matter, pay attention to this. This is important. Ladies and gentlemen, to prove to you your opinion doesn't matter, in this document, I want you to pay attention to what we do. We put as a fact, not your opinion, but theirs. 
See, we do put you, what you believe, but we put their opinions because in their world, they are the center. In their worlds, everything revolves around them. You have to come to them and say, Mother, may I? So that's what this document does. It recognizes their opinion, the same as you would want them to recognize your opinion. And in recognizing their opinion, we document that, wait a minute, your law said that you must be uniform. You must follow your own laws. So we put as a fact, comprehensive statutory schemes for non-judicial foreclosures, we put the case. This statutory scheme, as it is called, is in violation of the constitutional right to property, which holds that no one may be subjected to the loss of property without due process of law. This statutory scheme says that, uh-uh, they, as long as they have a security agreement, they can foreclose on you. Well, the security agreement under this must be backed by security, collateral, because it's a secured loan. Without the collateral backing of the security, there is no secured loan, no application of, pay attention, the Non-Judicial Foreclosure Act. Ladies and gentlemen, the loan is not secured because you receive the loan approval prior to acquiring the collateral. Hold on. You receive the loan in and of itself prior to receiving the collateral. So the loan was never secured by the collateral. Even if you did it subsequently, the loan was not secured by the collateral, making it an unsecured loan. Don't let a judge sit up there and tell you, well, it's this and it's that. See, that was what I was asking myself this morning. What makes an attorney's opinion better than mine? Yes, yes, yes. 35 years this year. August, well, no, sorry. 35 years August of me doing law. August. 35 years. I've had judges say, I don't know of an attorney who could have done a better job. Got witnesses to well, a whole courtroom of people hearing that. Several times. I have law firms that are asking me if I would come and consult with them, but yet I have these ignorant attorneys and these ignorant wannabe attorneys challenging my knowledge. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that you are not doing it, and I know you hear me saying this. It's not that I want to convince you to trust me and believe me. No, I want you to put me to the test. I want you to prove me wrong. As I've been saying about everything that I've spoken about, and to this day, I want you guys to know, to this day, no one has proved me wrong. But, look, wait a minute, if you make it about us proving you wrong, then we're always going to be questioning you. I want you to question the information. Don't question me. Question the information. Do your research behind me and validate what I'm saying. I only did this right here. Hold on. I only did this to show you that the law says that your household consumer goods for non-commercial use, pay attention, is not taxable, is not subject to what they are doing. Now, wait a minute. I need you also to understand one other thing because you guys are not getting it. They can't foreclose on your private property. There's a rule. Uh, wait, hold on. I got to show it to you so you all understand why they can't do it. Ladies and gentlemen, all laws in the world get their origination from Scripture. Now, when we say Scripture, it comes from the original set of laws. There was a law, don't eat from my tree. That's my tree. Keep your hands off my tree. Don't even touch. Don't even think about it. Okay. First law. Don't do it. Just that simple. You can eat from any other tree. Just leave my tree alone. That one belongs to me. Don't worry about why I put it there in the first place. Don't worry about whether or not I can eat physical food or not. That's not your concern. That's my business. Leave my business alone. 
Worry about your business. Do you understand? Everybody wants to read into it. Doesn't matter. He said that was his. He said don't do it. Wasn't for us to question. We didn't. It wasn't ours. Not our property. We don't get to tell somebody what they can and cannot do with their property. If somebody wants to go out there and buy a Lamborghini and set that Lamborghini on its hood in the middle of their front yard and leave it there for prosperity purposes, we don't get to question him. That's his business. He had the money to do that. That's his property. Leave that man alone. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is right here. So a creditor could rest assured that receiving repayment, the Israelites with no material assets could sell himself or his children into slavery, voluntary servitude, to care for their debts. Pay attention. Here is the part that the issue of your private home, your personal property. Let's read the gist, and you guys can go and look up the scriptures if you want. D stands for Deuteronomy. X stands for Exodus. So Deuteronomy and Exodus is where you're going to find it. On the other hand, the law also protected the debtor, just like it does today. They just don't tell you that it does. The creditor could not enter the house of the debtor and seize a pledge, but had to wait outside until the debtor brought it to him. Wait a minute, hold on. Isn't that what we just talked about, pledging collateral? Interesting, huh? Because where do you think they got it from? You think they created these things? They're getting that from scripture, ladies and gentlemen. That's why it's called a common law matter. Neither the garment of a widow nor necessities such as a hand mill or an upper grindstone thereof could be seized as a pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, they cannot seize your necessities. You have to document this is my homestead. This is my private residence. This was my private property. This home was bought for personal use, household goods, consumer goods, and it's protected under law. You all need to understand that. Now, since it was common for the poor to have only one outer garment, a mantle, in which they also slept, that garment, if taken as a pledge, had to be returned to that by the creditor at sunset. They were not allowed to deprive you of your means of protecting yourself from the elements. That's still true today. The only reason why it happens is because your property is listed as commercial property. Your loan was a personal loan. You've not corrected the record. I keep saying... Sorry, that, that's all we're going to talk about right there. I'm going to leave this open because I have to go to something else later for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been saying to all of you regarding your property. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not telling you all that I know everything. Well, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I, I'm wrong. No, I know everything, but that's all that I know. I don't know anything beyond everything. Okay? Just got to take my word for that one, all right? See, that's the kind of stuff that makes us kind of, you know, like pissed off at you. I don't give a... I'm, I apologize. <sighs> States moving away from taxes on tangible personal property. In those states, personal use property is excluded from taxation. Not just in those states, because it's a constitution. Tax rates must comply with those legislative or constitutional limits. What is the constitutional limit on private property? Uh, can the federal government tax personal property? Let's, let's look at that. I'm interested. To find that out, the federal government is generally prohibited from pr imposing direct taxes unless 
Such taxes are given to the states in proportion to population. Look, this that wasn't the question. Oh, this is wicked, wick, wicked, wicked, wickedpedia. Ladies and gentlemen, because people get to put their opinions up there, I don't follow Wikipedia. Well, you've gone to Wikipedia. Be yes, I've gone to Wikipedia before. But I don't go to Wikipedia as my source for finding out the tooth. Tooth, like Tevin Campbell would say. Uh, the property tax is unflip. I don't care about property tax. I'm talking about personal property. Look at that. Do y'all see that? None of them. Oh, no, no. Personal income tax. I'm looking for personal property, not property tax. Property tax and personal property are two different things. See, some jurisdiction also tax some type of business personal property. Nobody was asking about business personal property. You must understand that there are two types of property, commercial and private, business and private. Oh, I said with an E. I apologize. I put usage with an E. So it gave me the same results, but some states, personal use property is excluded from tax. Tangible, tangible personal property. Okay. You see, they create these legal terms, tangible personal property. So we're going to go here for a split second, and then we're going to go here, right here, right right here. This is case text, and we're going to put in case text what we just put in there because I really do feel some of you guys need to know this because that's why you're losing your homes. Remember, the common law says that you cannot have your property taken away to where you did not have your necessities. Okay? Now, yes, yes, yes. If, uh, For instance, the Israelites, you know that their, their inheritance, the property inheritance, they could, they could wager their inheritance and they could lose their inheritance. But however, here was the catch-22. After seven years... It had to be returned. And in other cases, after the 50th year Jubilee, all property reverted back to the people. Now, we're not under the Jubilee in America. We are under the seven-year statute of limitations. Okay? But that only is in certain circumstances, certain situations. Okay? Just want to let you know. See, here's the seven-year thing. And I, I'm sorry I did not look down. I just know what it says, y'all. According to Deuteronomy, do, 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 Deuteronomy 15, 1 through 3, it appears that during the Sabbath year, every Sabbath, every seventh year, a creditor could not press a fellow Israelite for payment of a debt. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why the statute of limitations for collecting on the debt is seven years. Unlike the Sabbath keeping Israelite who realized virtually no return from his land, the foreigner continued to have an income from his non-agricultural work. Reasonably, therefore, he could be pressed for payment of a debt during the Sabbath year. The foreigner could be, but not the Israelite. At the approach of the seventh year, some Israelites, knowing that they would not be able to be pressed on matters, may have refrained from lending to their needy brothers. But the law command, uh, condemns such selfishness. And then that's the 50th year, the Jubilee year, where all, even the slaves were set free. And all hereditary possessions went back to those who it belonged to. Not for the Levites, because the Levites had no inheritance. Jehovah was their inheritance. Okay? There you go! That was the law. That's why, if you notice, they mirrors our laws today. That was the common law, people, that they followed. Now, we're going here. Uh, what was here? People have, I don't know what this was. People have an interest in the collateral pledge security. No, uh, we don't need that. We're going to do this right here. And I kept that E there. I apologize, uh, case text. That E should not be there. Come on, hurry up. Consequently, the tax violates 
hold on. We're going to get rid of the E because the E don't belong there. We're going to get back to this because I think that it might actually point out what we're trying to point out. Okie dokie. The Florida Constitution prohibits, prohibits counties from levying the valorum taxes on intangible personal property. Intangible personal property. Pay attention. Counties may levy and add valorum tax on real property and tangible personal property. Uh, tangible personal property conditions of goods, chattel, and other articles of value capable of manual possession whose chief... Let's find out. I'm interested in the chief part. Anybody want to talk about chief? Watch this. Chief, 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 chief. Then we're going to go... Applebee versus Nulty. Applebee versus Nulty. I'm interested to find out what the chief is. What did the chief say? Anybody? No, that would have been a very bad joke, so I can't do that one. Yeah, we would have been, yeah, that one would have been bad. Okay, it says, tangible personal property consists of goods, chattels, and other articles of value capable of manual possession and whose chief value is intrinsic in the article itself. Neither party argues the appellant's ability to re-sign their membership coupled with the right to arrange for a buyer of their property to purchase it is tangible personal property. There you go. The appellants argue that their interest in a tangible personal property not subject to taxation. The appellants argue that the uh, real property that is subject to taxation. Florida statute, personal property for the purpose of this tax only shall be divided into four categories. Tangible, intangible personal properties, money and evidence of debt owed to the taxpayer, all evidences of ownership of, in a corporation or business. Okay, not worried about that. Where are you going to give me the arrest? Oh, because it was membership. Okay, that's not what I'm looking for, Chief. That's not the one I'm looking for, Chief. Send the bell at Dana Dane. I'm the rapper Dana Dane with fame. Sorry, I'm a Dana Dane fan, okay? You know, fan stands for fanatic. Oh, God. Look. Illinois Constitution prohibits personal constitutional, I mean, personal property tax. Ladies and gentlemen, every state does that, including the United States Constitution. Your right to property is absolute. Congress does not have any authority over your right to property. Consequently, the tax violates constitutional purpose to do away with the ad valorem tax of intangible personal property or an excise tax levied solely because of ownership and or possession of such property. This is the reason why they do that. Because of ownership and possession of the property. Because the Constitution says everyone has the right to property. We've added that information into your complaint. This is what I was trying to show you. Don't go around. Well, you can't tax this personal property. Unless you do your research. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why I took you to New Hampshire to give you Uniform Commercial Code, Article 9, Section 102 and 109. Go back and read the New Hampshire Code, and then go back and read the case law by Judge Grimm. Uh, Grisham, is it, what's it? See, I forgot. Grimes, Justice Grimes of the Supreme Court of 1966, I think that case was. Go back and read it and see what was decided. That your personal, private property cannot be touched. So here's the next thing you're you're admitting in this document. See, my claim is that a fraudulent conveyance, attempt to defraud, and that the property is owned by the state. Fact, all property is owned by the state, and the state is immune from suit without its consent. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. The bank states that it lent monies to my person to utilize to acquire a home. However, the bank has never documented the species of the currency. 
What, what was the currency you lent me on? You couldn't have done Federal Reserve notes because those things are said to be not redeemable in silver, gold, or any other commodity and receive no backing from anything. And that's been the case since 1933. The notes have no value for themselves. You can't restate that. You can't put it in a different format. If you lent me money, it couldn't have been Federal Reserve notes. So what did you lend it in? Because I was under the assumption you were giving me Federal Reserve notes, but I've later found out Federal Reserve notes are worthless. There must be value and consideration, and so since that is the assumption, I have the right to now challenge that. Now, you must prove, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the escrow trustee who had the responsibility of receiving the monies and sending it to the other party. Okay? There is no contract for no consideration, moves from anyone, and without consideration, there can be no contract. Those are not your words. These are the words of the court. Do you see? That's what we were doing and putting together your document. But we did one more thing. Hold on now. Hold on. We almost through, y'all. Sorry. It's supposed to be. We had the right document up. I just needed to go here. Ladies and gentlemen, nine elements of fraud. That's what we did. We put forth the elements of fraud. Okay, like I mentioned to you, there is not nine elements. There are only, I think fraud is five and conspiracy is four or vice versa. And see, sorry, that's me yawning. That lets you know what type of work I've been putting in. Right now in my house, it was 40 nine degrees this morning ladies and gentlemen 49 degrees that's actually perfect it's been a long time since i've been in 49 okay now watch this this is a government website so we're gonna find the elements of fraud to sustain a claim of fraud the insurer is required to plead or prove and that's who we're not pleading we are notifying the court in our complaint this is not a plea we're not submitting to anybody's jurisdiction. Pay attention. Oh, they do list nine. See, a representation. See, they, they say nine elements here too. But representation is misrepresentation. They go hand in hand. Okay, representation is representation. So if there is a claim of misrepresentation, there's a claim of representation. Falsities that somebody lied. Materials of the representation. The material that it was material to the conversation, material to the whole issue, that the person had knowledge of this. That's what we're saying. The banks had knowledge, and that you relied on those falsities. Yeah, they told me I needed to sign these papers, and that the hearer's ignorance of the falsities. No, I didn't know that that was that it wasn't my collateral, and I didn't have a right to do that at the time. That the hearer's silence, your silence was based on reliance on those falsities, that junk they told you. And that your rights, by relying on those false misrepresentation, has caused you injury. And that it's not only injured you, but also your property. Okay, there are not nine. There are only five. Okay, because some of them overlap. That's why you don't see misrepresentation. So let's go back up here, and I'm going to put... I'm going to put misrepresentation. Now I'm going to put misrepresentation, not misrepresentations. California, the general element of a cause of action for fraudulent misrepresentation are misrepresentation, fraud, representation, concealment, non-disclosure. Okay, do you notice how they say fraudulent misrepresentation? Because misrepresentation is an element of fraud, ladies and gentlemen. It is a necessary element of fraud. What are the six elements of fraud? Do you follow me? So there are not nine. The defendant makes a false representation of a past existing material fact susceptible to knowledge. Elements of fraudulent misrepresentation. 
because what it's given me is for California because it notes that I am um, which I think it's at San Fernando Valley oh Los Angeles County I'm not nowhere near Los Angeles County but because it puts me in California whew, oh well oh let's go here how to prove misrepresentation okay you guys don't mind because this is your complaint that you'll be filling out and so you're gonna need to know whether or not it already satisfies these things because your complaint has no weight unless it does what it's supposed to do wait 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 hold on y'all didn't understand that shame on you all ladies and gentlemen do you know that you just can't write a complaint just to be writing a complaint you have to cover several different areas that's what I spent seven days doing making sure that I could do that for all of you and do it as a group and not as one individual so that it applies to one individual but also if you wanted to add other people's names to it I had to write it in such a fashion that it applies to everyone not just me a representation was made yeah they represented something as a fact or something as this is the way it is the claim was false it's called a misrepresentation so that's why these two go together the claim was known to be false you, they knew what they were saying was a lie that I relied on that information to my injury and it was done to cause me to rely on it to injury to harm me and that I suffered harm and my, my property that's the material my property was damaged that, that's five ladies and gentlemen not six they just took one and expounded up on it there is one more ladies and gentlemen that you need to know about the falsities about them giving some misrepresentation and you relying on that misrepresentative information and them coming to you whenever these organizations out there presents false information and you rely on that false information and that information was deliberately given to you for you to rely on then I'm suggesting that you also bring up the reason because you must state why they did this you see they knew it was to be false and that their intentions was to allow you to rely upon it but for unjust enrichment and or gain so let me show you about the reason why they did this is for their unjust enrichment and or gain hold on we're gonna go to the very beginning <sighs> claim of alleged criminal conduct mortgage fraud conspiracy misrepresentations conspiracy misrepresentation to achieve unjust enrichment and a formal dispute of debt claim challenge that's what we're doing we're making sure that your complaint complies with all the aspects of what a complaint is required to have this is not just somebody putting together some document some template and then the verification because you don't say I swear under penalty of perjury ladies and gentlemen some of you don't know so I'm gonna show it to you I need penalty of perjury yeah let's do this penalty of perjury definition okay so I don't want Cornell I don't want their declaration I, I don't want the deck definition I want I want you guys to understand penalty of perjury is a legal term every state has its penalty of perjury statute this is the one for California this is the federal one okay that one well this is the actual statement under penalty of perjury perjury is punishable by imprisonment in state prison for two three or four years every person who willfully procures another person to commit perjury is guilty of subordination of perjury and is punishable in the same manner as would be punishable for being personally guilty of perjury every state has a perjury law but I am of the understanding 
I don't have to sign anything under penalty of perjury. There is no law requiring I sign anything under penalty of perjury. So why would I want to subject myself, even though I do go out of my way not to lie? But everybody lies, people. Your mama lie, your sister lie, your brother lie, your uncle lie, you lie, everybody lie. And I'm not talking about when they go to sleep at night. Okay? Because we're imperfect. But they say true and correct. Ladies and gentlemen, you are imperfect. Nothing will ever be true and correct. You will never do anything true and correct. There will always be some technicality that somebody can use to prove that that wasn't an accurate statement. That was, I mean, wasn't a true statement. It was an accurate statement. That's why this is the Jurat. I will read it to all of you. I do hereby attest, it's the same thing as swear, ascribe, same thing as attest, affirm, same thing as ascribe, declare, same thing as attest, ascribe, and affirm, as well as acknowledge, because there has to be an acknowledgement. With every verification, every validation, there has to be an acknowledgement. This is another acknowledgement right here. That the aforementioned information is based on first-hand information and or facts and or conclusionary laws by not only Congress of the several states, also of the United States, as well as the judicial decisions and opinions of the student and experienced judicial officers, possessives of judicial knowledge. Look up the term judicial knowledge I pr and put it in quotations. I think you will be impressed with what it says. Qualified to make such determinations, I relied upon these experienced public servants and their determinations respecting contracts, mortgage agreements, rights to collateral and non-judicial foreclosure act, and the various date foreclosure acts. It's supposed to be state, so I apologize. And that's not going to kill anything. Because Foucault Jacks have dates, so I'm going to leave that, okay? No, I'll probably go and correct it and then put it back up, all right? As well as the United States Treasury, and presenting this, my, our, complaint. That's supposed to be in, so I got two words. I got date and and that I need to correct, and I will. To these offices, to have a proper, thorough, and judicious investigation done so as to ascertain whether or not my allegations can be supported by the facts presented herein and or the accompanying evidence that's why you're going to attach your evidence i would attach the loan docs to prove that no collateral was suggested in the loan docs okay that's what i would do i would attach evidence people Copies, evidence. The more evidence, the more solid your case is. And if so, to have my complaint filed with the nearest magistrate and or judicial officer under the misperson of felony principles of law as required by law. The aforementioned, which is based on first-hand knowledge and or information, is wholly accurate and witnessed by and before God on this day of presentment and... I do so by exercising my right to practice religion of my choice by declaring that this to be done under divine retribution if otherwise. That's your penalty of perjury. I bring forth this my complaint as stated, so help me God. Now, what if you don't believe in the God? Everybody believes in the God, even the people who don't believe in the God. That very fact that they don't believe in the God is their God. Okay? So everybody believes in a God. Everyone, even if, I don't believe in God. You better go back and look at the definition of God. So nobody would be misstating anything if they were to check this. All right, I got those two words that I just found that I will go correct now. It's a headache because I got to unlock the document and then I got to save it and then I got to save it in the other two documents. So I will put it up in a minute, y'all. I got to go, but I just want to let y'all know, again, this is complete. This was done for you all. This was not done for me. I don't have a mortgage. Okay, and the mortgage that I did have, I didn't have any problems with. We sold the house. I only had it for a couple of years. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, 
What you all need to know, I need you to pay attention. This was done for you. This was not done for me. So I'm about to go correct those two words. And then I'm about to go and work on the other documents that I need to work on while I have my auxiliary battery that has lasted for full day and a half. All right, got to go. Take care of yourselves, everyone. This, again, was for you. Goodbye.